Hello, today I am going to be painting this butcher slash scavenger lady from Vevictus Mini's latest October Patreon release. It is all undead themed and comes with mostly a lot of zombies, but what I really love is the NPCs and characters that come with it. This here is a lady wandering the battlefield, butchering and scavenging the spare parts. The fact that she is barefoot drew my attention and made me instantly love the creepy factor. I thought what better mini to paint with Halloween approaching. The fun thing I'm going to do with her is a lot of blood and mud effects. So Sterland mud and blood for the blood god. But before we can get there, let's paint everything that will be underneath the blood and the mud. I'm going to start off by painting the skin. Most skin paint recipes following the Citadel range will follow a very similar pattern, and that is a rather dark undertone, in this case Bugman's Glow, followed by a warm wash, such as Reichland Flesh Shade, then a mid-tone, Cadian Flesh Tone, and an extreme highlight, for instance Kislev Flesh. However, this mini is going to be really dirty, and pretty much the entire mini is going to be washed using Agrax Earthshade to give it more of a brown, dirty tone instead of a warm rose tone. So I'm going to paint her a bit differently. This shade is not going to feature at all. Instead, we're going to use Agrax Earthshade. However, I'm going to switch things up a bit. I'm going to first do Buckman's Glow, followed by the Cadian Flesh Tone. Then I will do the Agrax Earthshade all over the entire mini, followed by my extreme highlights. Let's get started. I have a little bit of Bugman's Glow on my palette, I've watered it down ever so slightly with some water, and I'm going to go around all of the exposed skin. So getting into all the recesses there with the eye sockets, the chin, the gap in between her dress and her gloves, as well as the previously mentioned exposed bare foot. I'm going to go around, and since it is a fairly dark grey undertone. I'll do two coats of this just to make sure I have a nice smooth coverage. While I wasn't being too neat with the Bugman's Glow, I've now switched to a smaller brush since I'm going to take the Cadian Flesh Tone and just layer it on. What I mean by that is I've watered this down ever so slightly and I'm going to avoid the recesses and only paint all the exposed areas. A good way to show this off is here where that little indent on the knee is, I definitely won't paint over that, but all the exposed parts of the leg is going to get a nice all over layer of Cadian flesh tone. Maybe skip the little indent there by the foot and go over the edge of the foot there, there and the toes. I'm going to probably do two layers of this as well and keep the second layer to an even smaller area than the first. And the other thing is, while this does look a little bit jarring going on, it actually becomes a bit more transparent as it dries. The other point, obviously, is, is the face. The shallow, 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 <laughs> shallow eyes. The eye sockets will be left. The nose will definitely be this color. The cheekbones going down to the chin and picking up the lips, almost waving my brush gently over it to see what gets picked up and what doesn't. The skin is pretty much done now. I'm going to do the all over wash of Agrax Earthshade when I'm done with all of the base coats and all the other things I want to do that need to be washed. The next thing I want to do now is the hair. I'm going to go for a blonde hair look for this miniature and I'm going to share with you my favorite recipe for blonde hair. Are you ready? That's it. <laughs> Skeleton Horde Contrast Paint makes amazing blonde hair. I normally do it over a Wraithbone spray uh, and for quick minis it looks great. 
going to do things a bit differently this time, just because I want to see how it looks. I'm going to first base coat the hair Zandri dust and then do the all over contrast of Skeleton Horde. Uh, if it's not dirty enough, I'll wash over that with Agrax as well before I do some final highlights. Let's play around, see how it goes. I have a little bit of Zandri dust on my palette, watered down just a tad. And I'm going to go around now and base coat in all of her hair. There is a really cool little skull pendant on the back here. I'm just going to go over it for now. I will base coat that in lead belcher just to make it stand out when I get to the weapon a bit later. So for now if I go over, not the end of the world. Two coats of Zandri dust later, we've got a nice foundation there for the skeleton horde. I've left it open here because I want to show you just how easy this recipe is. Just get some on the brush. I'm taking a fairly small brush here. This is a small base brush, the new one. Uh, and then you just put that all over the base coat. While this is obviously used for skeletal bits, bones and whatnot, it makes an amazing dark brown in the recesses and lighter everywhere else. And when you have a mini like this with nice well-defined strands of hair, nice recesses, it really seeps in there and it makes a super easy blonde hair. That's on there now. It's given some great shading. It is still wet as you can see by that glisten there. So I'm going to move on to the next bit. I'm going to focus now on her dress. I really have this idea in my mind that her dress was once pristine and white and clean and over time of just running through the mud and the grime and the battlefields she's never changed to this white dress and it's become more and more tattered and more and more dirty. So I'm going to paint it with a sort of off-white Rakarth Flesh. As most people would know, the key to painting white is to not paint white. It's got some Rakarth flesh here on my palette. Thinned it down a little bit. I'm going to go around the dress, but not the apron, and put this down. You'll see there it is a very light color, but it almost looks like a, shall we say, a faded old wool. Like how wool over time becomes a little bit more creamy than white. Now with that Rakarth flesh done, I've got some dried bark, and this I'm going to use, first of all, for the gloves, to give a nice dark leather effect. And while I've got this out, I'm just going to pick out these little pouches that she's wearing. She's got one over here, and one on the other side, over here. The dried bark is sorted. I've left the belt for now, I want to do the belt only after I've done the apron. And the apron stumped me for a little bit. I went back and forth in my mind. I knew I wanted the dress to be a dirty white, but I couldn't decide what color to make the apron. So I went to my color wheel, and I thought because there's going to be a lot of red blood on the mini, the best color to complement that would be a nice green. I've got your Castellan green, I've got some on my palette, and I'm going to use this for the apron. The other reason I like this green is because it actually goes very nicely with an Agrax Earthshade wash becomes a nice dull brown green. Let's see how that looks when it's done. I've now got a tiny bit of Corvus black and that's just going to be very carefully on the belt over here as well as just for while I've got it the handle of the meat cleaver can also be this color. The reason I got Corvus black and not matte black or abaddon black is because we're going to be shading this. I want that sort of not quite black, but almost dark grey, just so that the, when the shade does go in, it does give a little bit of more definition. And finally, a tiny bit of lead belcher, mostly for the meat cleaver, as well as ever so gently picking out the buckles on the belt over there and on the straps over there.
And with that I have finished the first part of painting something dirty, which is to paint something clean. Next up I'm going to take my Agrax Earthshade, give it a good shake, pop it open, and I'm going to put this wash all over the entire mini. The reason for this is I want this to first of all tie everything together, but secondly it's got to dirty it up. So I'll be very very careful with this, going around making sure it doesn't pool in any one particular area. And then once it dries, we'll see how this looks. I've given her plenty of time to dry. So much time, in fact, that it's now the next day. Uh, this is honestly looking great after that shade. The first thing I'm going to do now is quickly go back and touch up that skull that I promised I would do before I washed it and completely forgot to do. So let me jot that in there and then we'll carry on. I'm now going to go back to the skin. I've got my Cadian flesh tone here. I'm just going to use it very sparingly to do some highlights. So I'll do a tiny little bit on her nose, the cheekbones to make those stand out. And then because it's a nice focal point, just a little line down her leg there. And that part of the calf muscle down to the toes. And then finally to tie the skin all together, a tiny bit of Kiesler flesh, just again on the very highest points. So normally with an NPC I would leave the hair just like that, but I'm having fun with this one. So I've gone back to my Zandri dust with my small little brush, and I'm just going to pick out a few little strands of hair just to highlight them back up. I won't go too overboard with this because I do want that skeleton horde color to be the predominant one, but some of the strands can just have a little bit extra highlight. And I'm actually going to take it even one step further. I've got a little bit of a shabti bone here, and this will be for the very, very top highlight parts of the hair. Good example is here at the back, the parts that stand out the most. So just right over there, maybe on this piece that goes over there. Same with that strand. And like a lot of the Citadel layer paints, when this dries, it will become a bit more transparent and a little less obvious. With the face and the hair sorted, I'm now going to go on and do the dress. So I've got my Rakoth flesh once again, and I'm going to use that just on the raised up areas, just to bring back that mid-tone again. I have watered it down a little bit. I'm going to go around, skipping the recesses, and putting that there. So we have a nice mixture of Rakoth flesh, washed Rakoth flesh, and then the deep recesses there. I'm going to go along and just re-establish that tone. Now normally with my Stormcast Eternals, I would highlight up to Pallid Witch Flesh. However with her, I think Pallid Witch Flesh would be a bit too clean. So I've just actually went on my palette and mixed Pallid Witch Flesh and Rakoth Flesh together to make a highlight that isn't too jarring. I'm going to just, using the same brush, just run that exactly down the middle of where I did the Rakoth Flesh just to give a nice gradient between them. Yeah, I think that's a good color. It doesn't look too jarringly clean for her. And I'll just go along now and have a nice gradient between the Rakoth flesh and this mix. The dress is done and now I'm onto the apron. I'm going to do a similar thing here where I'll return to my original color, being the Castellan green. And then I'll highlight it up with Lauren Forest. However, due to this being quite a central focus point of the apron, I've got some Nurgling green here, and I'll be very, very sparingly applying some highlights of that. So first, Castellan green, going over and avoiding the recesses. 
and then some highlights of Lauren Forest. And then finally, some very extreme highlights of Nurgling Green. The apron is highlighted, and now I'm going to move on to highlighting the gloves and the pouches. I have some Gawthor Brown for this. I'm just going to go along and pick out the raised areas. A good example would obviously be the fingers that stand out there as well as the edges of the gloves where they end over there. Pouches are a bit easier, they've got a nice little flap to pick out as well as the corners. And with that I am done with the highlights and ready to weather, except for one thing. I normally don't do this with little NPC minis but I kind of falling in love with this mini so i'm going to attempt to paint the eyes i'm not going to do it with a camera in front of me because that's just calling for trouble but my recipe is the one from duncan Rhodes painting academy i'm going to start off with a nice dark black in this case a bad and black and i'm going to black in the entire socket and then i will take a tiny bit of matte white uh my one and only color from the army painter and just do a dot dot on either side of the black. I'll do it off camera and let's see how it looks. Well I'm really glad I did that off camera because I took a lot of time cleaning that up. But now that I'm done with the mini, let's have some fun with the blood and the mud. I've got here some technical paint blood for the blood god and if I give it a good shake and open it up, ugh, look at that, it's glistening and goopy and very horrific. So I've got on the side here just a very old cheap brush. I can't remember which craft store I got this from. But I'm going to do the blood in a few different ways. Oh, this is viscous. Oh. <laughs> the first thing I'm going to do is put some just quite heavily on the weapon, on the meat cleaver. So just getting some on there. Ooh. That actually looks really cool. No, first step, just with a brush, getting some nice glistening blood on there, maybe a little bit on the hand, why not? Now I've got a slightly harder bristle, also a very cheap brush. Again, I just picked these things up from random hobby shops. And I'm going to do a nice flicking motion to splatter some blood on there. So let's get some paint. Oh, this is going to go all over my clothes and all over me, but let's have some fun. And the plan is to take it and just sort of flick, flick, flick onto her like that. Ooh, it's getting all over her face and her apron. If I go a bit closer to the camera, you can see that effect. It's quite simple for now, but I'm going to go ahead and do this a few more times, almost like dry brushing, do a few passes. Uh, and just like dry brushing, less is more. You don't want to go too heavy. I'll just do it bit by bit until I'm happy. Ooh. <laughs> Look at that. I may have had a bit too much fun with her. I'm going to move on now to the mud effect. I'm going to do this in two ways. Uh, first, I'm going to just paint on some mud. So I've got here some Rhinox hide. I've got a brush I normally use for dry brushing. And in a similar fashion, I've loaded up some paint, rubbed it off on a bit of tissue paper on the side here, as if I'm getting prepared to dry brush. But instead of dry brushing, I'm just going to like stipple it on almost just push it onto her there and this is going to leave a nice old crusty mud effect on the clothes and again this is going to be a gradual build up i'm going to put a little bit higher but not too high it's going to go along there along the feet and all along there just making everything look crusty and grimy and dirty Having built up a few layers of that, she now looks like she's been trawling through the mud in this dress for quite some time. I've got one final thing I need to do, and that's to use some actual mud. Well, the closest equivalent. This is a technical paint, Sterland mud. It's normally used for basing. It's what I use for most of my minis. Got a nice 
clean part of it here. Instead of a brush, I like to use a texture tool. Uh, this is just a simple hobby store one. I'm going to load up some. And normally what I would just do is plop it right on the base and be super careful not to get any onto the actual mini. In this case though, I kind of do want some on the mini, especially on places like the foot. So I'm going to be a bit generous with this and just go all around glooping on some mud. The only place I'll be neat is when I'm done, I will just use a bit of toilet paper or my finger or even the tool just to scrape away anything that's fallen off the side just to make sure the side is nice and smooth. That mud effect has dried and made some nice textures as well as gone into the dress a little bit, which is good. I'm just going back to my Gawthor Brown very quickly. I've got some on an old dry brush and I'm going to use this just to dry brush the mud to give it a bit more of a highlight as well as because the mud on her dress is quite dark, I'm going to go very selectively with this lighter brown and do some lighter brown over the darker brown. And there we have it. The bloody butcher lady is finished. Oh, look at that blood glisten in the light there. I had a ton of fun painting this miniature and just going overboard with the special effects. And this has definitely put me in the spooky October mood. I'll leave a link down below to Faye Victor's miniatures, as well as whatever paints I used to paint this lady. If you have any comments, please put them down below. I am a new channel and I'm open to suggestions. If there's anything you'd like to see me paint or <laughs> attempt to paint next, let me know. Until next time, cheers.